piecewise functions. Da -da. All right, so piecewise functions are what we're going to talk about next. So here we're going to pull in what we know about uh, transformations can come into play here. Uh, interval notation comes into play. Pretty much everything we've talked about so far, domain and range, they, come, they can come into play also here. So all the stuff we've learned so far is going to come into play into piecewise functions. All right, so let's go into, first off, let's talk about what a piecewise function is. So definition, piecewise functions. And here's the definition for that. So piecewise functions. It's a function that is defined by two or more equations over a specified domain. A function that is defined by two or more equations over a specified domain. Okay, so you're like, um, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Whatever. So let me get this next part here. So I like to like not necessarily take it to another level so it makes it more sense. So, pretty much what's happening is, with piecewise functions, we're taking pieces of equations and putting them together to make a function or a graph. So we take this, a piece of this graph, take a piece of this graph, take a piece of this function, and put it all together and make a function, and put it all together to make a graph. So we're taking pieces of each one of these things and making a graph, that's all. So that's why they call it a piecewise function, because it's pieces of functions put together. So it's not bad, that's not bad. Now with that, here's the thing that can go on. There can be two equations, there can be three equations, or even more equations in a piecewise function. So there could be up to like 10 or 20 or 15 or anything of that sort. But for this class, the max that we're gonna do is three, three equations. So we do our piecewise functions, and we're gonna deal with just the max of three equations. Hey, once in a while, you could see a fourth equation, but most of the time it's just three equations. So again, there, there can be two, three, or more equations in a piecewise function. And again, we're using only pieces of those three, two, three, or, or more equations to make up a function or make up a graph. So that's what's happening there. Only pieces of it. All right, so let's go to an example of what a piecewise function looks like. So here's an example of one. Yeah, it looks kind of weird. You got all the inequalities going on. You got the commas. You got the if. You got the... The bracket there, you got the f of x, and all the good stuff. Um, this is what it could look like. Now, there's other ones that might not use the word if in it. It might say for, or it might not even have the word in there at all. It might just be the equation, a comma, then an inequality. So it changes over and over and over different ways. But looking at this one, just looking at it, whenever you look at a piecewise function, the left side over here, in front of the comma, these are always your equations. Equations. So remember we talked, you said that there's two or more, two, three or more equations that could be going on there. So these are the equations on this side. On the other side here, the inequalities, These are our, consider our conditions. Conditions. Now, with that, what is a condition? If then, then that, blah, blah, blah. So if this is here, then you use that one. So here, the conditions tell us which equation to use. So it tells us which equation to use. Okay, so it's not bad. That's not hard. We can do that. That's not that's not bad at all. So we can work this out. We can we know our inequalities. We've talked about interval notation, we've graphed them on a number line and all the good stuff. But the biggest thing that messes most people up here is that they put the the number in the wrong spot. Let's say like x is equal to let's say four. And they have to figure out which one of these inequalities says this pretty much has x is greater than 4, x is equal to 4. So we know here this is less than, we know this is between, we know this is greater than 3. So we're talking about x, x is equal to 4. That means it'll be down here because 
4 is greater than 3, so that that's right. Or for you to go back to what we talked about, interval notation and all that great stuff, let's jump over here to um, a slide, and we're going to come back to this slide in a few minutes. Come on, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at these. So I just pulled the inequalities off of the piecewise functions that we just had a few seconds, the piecewise function we had a few seconds ago on the other slide. So I pulled off these each one of these inequalities. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph each on a number line, and then we're going to list out some numbers that actually are inside of that whole inequality that makes sense and that is true for that inequality. So for each one of these, we're going to draw a number line. Negative 2 right there. For this one here, we're going to do negative 2 and positive 3. And then on the last one here, let me erase that. Uh, We get a three right there and so here we talked about inequalities and um, graphing them so we know here that says x is less than or equal to negative two and we said that the x is on the left side we shade wherever the arrow is pointing so it's pointing this direction here so it means we shade in this direction so the numbers that are less than negative two so that arrow is pointing this direction so we shade that direction but on negative two is that a bracket or parenthesis you're absolutely right if you set a bracket right on negative two, a bracket right there. Ooh, Jesus. All right, so that, that'll work. That'll work. So here we have those numbers, those parts. So now what I want you to do, what we're going to do under here, I want you to write down some numbers that are inside this shaded part. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. You're going to write some numbers down there inside that shaded part. All right, so if you stop the video, hopefully you start it up again. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some. So we know negative 2 is here. And why is negative 2 a part of that? Because that's the equal to sign right there. So negative 2 is there. Is negative 1 there? No, because negative 1 will be over here closer to 0. So we'll say like negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, so on and so forth. And it goes on forever, right? To negative infinity? Exactly. So those numbers are there. That's where our x values are. This is where x will equal these x values. All right, looking at the second one here, we should know how to shade that too. So we know here we shade between them because x is between the two numbers. So we shade between the two. And on the negative 2, we know it's a parenthesis because it's not equal to. And on the 3, we know it's a bracket because it's equal to there. Okay, so what numbers are here? Can we use negative 2 there at all? No, because it's not equal to negative 2. So that means we have to start to the next number. It's like negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And again, because it's an equal to sign there, we can use 3. And this is what x is going to equal. Oops. Oops. There we go. There we go. You know. All right, and then the last one, since x is on the left side again, we shade wherever the pointing, whatever this is pointing, and it's pointing this direction. So we should shade everything that's greater than 3, because that's the symbol that's there. It's greater than. x is greater than 3. All right, and then again, print C on the 3, because it is just the less than and greater than sign. Bam. So then what are some numbers that work there? Can we use 3 at all for there? Is it equal 3 at all right here? No, so that means we have to go above that, right? So we can do 4, we can do 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. Goes on forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. Say so x equals these. Alright, so that's not a bad thing. We can figure that out. We, can, we understand that. Now when it comes to us actually working problems out with this, that is very important to understand what numbers are in the, the x values there. Because if you use the wrong equation, you'll, you'll do all this work for nothing. You're wasting your time. And I hate wasting I hate wasting you guys' time. I hate wasting my own time. So that's not waste time. That's not waste time. Okay. So I'm going to jump back here. And we just looked at the piecewise functions, piecewise function here. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip over this next one. It's the, the 
when I pull the shade down, the um, piecewise function is still there. Piecewise function is still there, so I'm not going to worry about that part, so I'm going to skip over that because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to go to this part here. Oh, no, I don't want to do that part. There we go. All right, we're looking at evaluating piecewise functions. And evaluating them means that you just substitute the value for x into the problem in the right equation and then work it out. So we're going to evaluate a piecewise function. Because we like to evaluate. We talked about evaluating a lot. So the first thing when it comes to evaluating piecewise functions is determine what the x equals. What does x equal? Like, what does x equal? I don't know. It's given, it's in the problem. They'll give it to you. They'll tell you what x is. Okay, so once you determine what x equals, then you're going to determine which equation x will be in. And let me make this a little bit bigger. I don't think you can see that here on the side. Uh, there you go. Now you can see what you see. Oh. All right, so we're going to determine which equation x is in. And the inequality is going to tell us that. It's going to let us know what we just did on the other page. Then we're going to substitute the value of x into that equation we said was given to us. And then we just simplify it down. That's it. So just those four easy steps. What is x? Which equation? Substitute, simplify. So what is x? Sub, simplify. Ah, sorry. So we're doing what is x? Which equation? Substitute, and then simplify. So what is x? Which equation? Substitute, simplify. Okay? So I'm going to stop here with the notes. And I'm going to go to the next video is going to start our first example for this section. All right.